the Amherst Township Trustees call to order, we stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Abraham? Here. Lynch? Here. Eurig? He's absent. Kish? Present. Okay, I have the meeting minutes from the June 8, 2021 regular meeting of the Amherst Township Trustees. The meeting was called to order at 7.02 p.m. by Chairman Lynch, pledged to the flag. Roll call, Abraham, Lynch, Urig, and Kish were all present. Also in attendance, Case Marsh, R. Cerrone, L. Ashley, G. Lynch, and R. Whitman. 6-121, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Urig. Move to approve the minutes of the May 25th 2021 regular meeting is read, all ayes. 6-2-21, a motion by Urig, seconded by Abraham. Move to approve the bills and financial reports with reservations, all ayes. Fiscal Officer Kish noted it's budget time and our 2022 budget will need to be approved and into the Auditor's Office by July 20th. Fiscal Officer Kish asked for a work session with the trustees and road superintendent Smirsch once she has completed the budget. Potential dates are July 2nd at 7.30 a.m. and or July 6th at 5 p.m. Dates will be confirmed this week. There were no audience concerns and under correspondence, Fiscal Officer Kish noted that copies of the Otarma Insurance Anniversary Outline was provided to each trustee. A decision needs to be made prior to paying the invoice if we want to increase the liability limits. Once that is determined, I will need Neil to sign off on the original and the invoice will be paid at the June 22nd meeting. Trustee Lynch noted that the bid opening for the Angle Ditch Restoration Phase 3 will be 7.30 p.m. Tuesday, July 13, 2021. Trustee Lynch also noted once again that we received notification that the State of Ohio will now be responsible to determine if townships will receive funds from the American Rescue Plan. Trustee Abraham brought forth a request from Life Care Ambulance, Inc., requesting select items to be purchased for the Sandstone Joint Ambulance District with the ARP funds if Amherst Township were to receive funds. Packets contain correspondence from the Lorain County Engineer's Office regarding South Dewey Road resurfacing bids and the recommendation to go with precision paving. Under reports, ambulance, the next Sandstone Joint Ambulance District Board meeting will be held on June 17th at 7 p.m. at the Amherst Fire Station. Under zoning, there were zero permits issued for the month and the year-to-date total of three new homes. Road Park and Cemetery, keeping up with mowing, trimming, and potholes. Road Sweeper came in and did Hidden Valley. We will begin to do roadside trimming. Bid books for the South Dewey Road resurfacing project were returned from the county engineer. Trustee Lynch noted that packets contained two sets of correspondence regarding concrete specifications, one from Pete Swick and one from John Evanson. Both were related to Hampshire Farms. The question raised was if the township agreed with the ODOT specifications and what the contractor suggested, or do we want to keep the spec we have, or even change to something different. 6321, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham, to authorize Fabrizi's proposed substitution for dowels and tie rods for the Hampshire Farm subdivision per the attached ODOT specification. All eyes. Senior Services signed up for an OTA webinar on grant rating. Lorain County Public Health grant was partially awarded in the amount of $6,756.81 out of the request of $14,084.87. Still working on the NOPEC Community of Event grant and the Green Ribbon grant. Under complaints, they are being handled by the designated individuals. Unfinished business, solid waste community grant increased to $11,494.87. Policy Committee met today and the Recycling Center is having their best year ever and looking to increase hours. Trustee Urig suggested putting a story in the newsletter about the County Recycling Center and using the grant dollars towards the grinding of yard waste in our newsletters. He also announced several retirements of Lorain County Solid Waste employees. The next regularly scheduled meeting will be held Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. at the Amherst Township Hall. There is a tentative budget work session scheduled for July 2nd, 2021 at 7.30 a.m. and a second, if needed, scheduled for July 6th, 2021 at 5 p.m. 6.421, a motion by Abraham, seconded by Eurek to adjourn at 7.53 p.m. All ayes. Are there any changes or corrections to the June 8th meeting minutes? I have none. none. Can I have a motion to approve? So move. Second. Eurek? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. 
Okay, we did not get our credit card statements in time for this meeting, which was very strange, so we will have to probably do that at the first meeting next okay. month. You have the payment list in front of you. Um, I know it was mentioned about Otarma. Um, I do have that paperwork, but I did not process that check because I knew I'd be in here Friday doing the budget, so I figured we could make the decision and I would cut the check on Friday okay. when I'm here as long as you guys are all okay with that. Um, our financials, revenue to date, we have $742,130.04, and our expenses to date are $455,137.42. the payment listing there's really nothing unusual. Okay, are there any questions in terms of the bills or the financials? No, I have no. There aren't any, then can I have a motion to approve the, the pay the bills and approve the financial reports with reservation? So moved. Second. Eric? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. It at the moment, Chris. That is it. At the, other okay. than I, the um, well, yes, and I wanted to remind everybody that I'll be preparing the 2022 draft budget this Friday morning, and then sending it to you by Friday afternoon for you to have a whole week oh, to look at it. Um, and then a work session was decided uh, regarding the budget will be on July 2nd at 7:30 a.m. with the trustees, myself, and Kevin. And I'll get that posted. And Kevin, you already got to Chris as far as what you wanted for roads. And then, of course, the Otarma issue. Yeah, the Otarma one, Chris, when I was going through this, and I know that um, you know, at the last meeting, and Linda, you've looked over this, and Kevin have, you've gotten all the updates as far as the new equipment um, to Chris. What I didn't see in here was what the current total um, coverage was. You know, they give what the additional would be for six million, seven million, eight million, but I couldn't find the documentation I had is the current amount four or five million? I couldn't find that anywhere in any of this documentation. Let me see if it's on her email, if you give me a moment. Okay. And for the trustees, while Chris is looking that up, you know, it gives you the coverage, like, for the, uh, the various areas of the township, like the parks and here in the facilities. It gives all the vehicles general liability, but... I certainly wasn't going to go through all those items and do my own totaling to see what it was, and then I... <laughs> uh, it looks like legal liability for general li It looks like five, five. Each occurrence. So it's currently five? Okay. Yes. That's what I needed to know. I know we had that the last time, and I don't know why it doesn't show up in the documents and they I gave us. And I forwarded everything to you, did mm -hmm. I not? Um, you provided it at the last meeting, I believe. I thought I forwarded it. Well, maybe it did. I, I've got the paperwork here, so perhaps you did, and we had Linda print it out so that everybody had a copy at the meeting. But the difference uh, with everything that was added with the pavilion and the computers and all the AV equipment and the security equipment and um, the, the difference is 452 more dollars. That is, um, it went from 23,417 to 23,869. But again, for five million dollars coverage. An additional 452. 452. So that's nine six. So that's 23869 now? Yep. Okay, well, that's Well, I'm just going to suggest for the additional million in coverage is that, you know, for the three, it's roughly 3.7% more of 
the twenty three thousand eight hundred and sixty nine that we actually increase our coverage if david and denny or one of them agree with that i agree with it i i agree because we haven't updated that in a while right yeah. So with all the other equipment and the park facilities on there, you know, we will have everything together. And Chris, if you need me to sign that tonight. I can have you sign it tonight. Okay. And you've got a clean copy because I I, mine's all marked up. I do. Okay. Take care of it. Do you need a motion on that? Uh, I, I would guess we should. It's a sizable increase, and we need to. Uh... Okay, well then, uh, I'll make a motion uh, that we increase the, li the liability limit to six million dollars at a cost of eight hundred seventy-three additional dollars. And I'll second that motion. I'm just going to add from Otarma, but you can fill in what the full writing is, Chris. Ohio Township Association Risk Management Authority. It's official. Um, Lynch. Yes. Abraham. Yes. Yuri. Yes. What's the number on that? That Chris? is going to be six seven. Okay, so you've got everything covered then in terms of the financials, all right. Yep. And Chris has already mentioned that we'll have the first budget uh, meeting on Friday, July 2nd at 7.30 a.m. in the morning for the 2022 budget, and then we'll have a backup meeting that's only if required on Tuesday, July 6th at 5.30 p.m. And Linda, I'll get you the information to post both of those. And we'll even post that second one. It's only if required based on what comes out of the first meeting. Tuesday. It'll be the, the one for sure we're having is Friday. Right. July 2nd, 7.30 a.m. And then Tuesday, July 6th at 5.30 p.m. That'd be just prior to the zoning commission meeting. And that's that the zoning commission meeting is at six thirty. Six thirty. Yeah, that should give us plenty of time. But that would just be if we ask Chris for some adjustments there, Danny. Right. We if we have the meeting. If we have to, correct. Right. Got it. And that's listed as item 5B on your agenda, so those dates and times are shown there. Okay, at this time I'd like to welcome everyone in attendance. If anyone has anything to bring before the trustees, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, correspondence, Chris? Other than what I printed for you, which I'm sure you're going to talk okay. about. Okay, and we'll be covering that under correspondence. Okay, David? I have nothing under correspondence. Denny? Nothing. Okay, well then, um, we do have, as we're all aware, we'll get to the uh, angle ditch during the stormwater report, uh, Denny. Um, but just a reminder, we also have a bid opening on Tuesday, July 13th at 7.30 p.m. for the angle ditch restoration phase three. Uh, second item is under the, you've got in your packet, which was as of June 18th, uh, this is from the OTA in terms of legislative updates, 
and the key item I wanted to cover there was the second paragraph about the House and the Senate continuing to work out the details on the, the American Rescue um, Plan funding provisions uh, for townships since the townships uh, were not included in those federal funds based on some language ambiguity in the bill. Um, but there's no need to read this one now because uh, two additional documents came out today. Linda sent one about 11 o'clock, I believe it was, mm -hmm. that came from the OTA. Uh, she must be on a, a privilege list because mine didn't come till 3 o'clock. Um, but subsequent to that, right around 6 o'clock, and Chris has provided you with a spreadsheet. Um, Linda had sent out earlier where the Senate, the, the state Senate, uh, had agreed in Senate Bill 111 to fund the townships, but it still has to go to the House, and it may go back to the Senate for some concurrence with any changes. But the, the OTA then finally had what the actual potential numbers for township funding could be. And you will see highlighted in the documents you have there for Amherst Township, and again, this still isn't set, is they're saying that $602,632.84, which would be split in two payments over two years of $301,316.42. And just so the trustee is aware, this is significantly less than the $1.3 million estimates originally provided based on the federal legislation. So I'm not really sure what happened to that other money. Um, who ended up with it, but uh, obviously from the original estimates in the federal legislation, this is about half, uh, but still a sizable amount for us. There is a uh, threshold cutoff of 75% of your the township's budget, but this here is well below 75% threshold of our budget. So assuming the state goes through with it, we do have the potential there. Uh, there is another webinar scheduled for Thursday, June 24th with, that the State Office of Budget Management will put on. I would recommend that people sign up for that June webinar. June 24th? June 24th, this what Thursday. Time? Um, I'll have to look at my phone, Denny. This just came in at 6 o'clock. <laughs> Linda probably got it sooner. <laughs> I didn't see it. I didn't see that one. Okay, it's... They've been in the morning. They've been like 9.30 to 11.30. Yeah, mine tend <laughs> to come later. I mean, the, the webinars, that's when they've been scheduled. I don't know okay. what this one would be. Yeah, it'll be Thursday, June 24th at 1.30 oh, p.m. For this one. Thursday and, at 1.30 p.m. Right, and I'll forward this. Uh, if you guys aren't on the distribution list, I'll forward this over so you have the link to register, but... I would strongly encourage people to get on there. Uh, when I send this document to you, it will all also have the link for the uh, previous webinars uh, that we've attended on these funds because we are encouraged to attend the webinars even though we might not receive funding, uh, just in case you do, to understand what expenditures you can use the funds for. Well, they do have those stored on YouTube, so you can even see the previous um, webinars that were put out there, the historical ones. But this is good news. Oh, I did have the Otarma liability on there, Chris, and I even had a spot for the motion number, <laughs> which is 6-7. Six, 6-7. Seven. Six, seven. Yeah, that's 7-C. So it's going to be 6-8? No, it was 6-7 for a time. I had a spot on the agenda. I thought I didn't, Denny, but oh. I did have that on there. Okay, you did have it. Yeah, yeah it's under 7-C. The other one's just a placeholder because we still haven't received notice from OPWC in terms of the authorization for the South Dewey Road resurfacing. Linda and Kevin, you have the information, though, of a webinar on 
you know, how to do their online system uh, now, which will be the first time this year completely online. But that's starting with round 36, so 35, which is Dewey Road, is still going to be on the old system. You know what's odd? Because if you look on their website, they act like the current round is also going to be electronic. That's if, read their we'll website, see. you'll we'll see, see it. Okay. <laughs> because that question came up during the webinar on Monday. Okay. And they said that we will get an email for round 35 with all the links and stuff, and we'll be using the old system. Because the new system isn't going to even be up and running till August 1st. Okay. Well, it'll still be electronic, but I don't, hopefully they send a notice to us, but as in the past, we've got to watch because we never know who receives the notice. If it's you, Kevin, Chris, or me, you know, since you have multiple people signing these documents, then I don't know that they keep their distribution list up to date, but they always give that catch-all at, at the end if you read through it all. If you are not the appropriate person, please forward <laughs> <clears throat> so you're relying on somebody to forward yeah, it we'll on. keep an eye out. It, it, all of the paperwork won't come until July 1st when their okay. new fiscal year opens. Okay, well then after that, hopefully then at the yep. next meeting, we'll have a resolution ready. I've already prepared the resolution. It's just, okay. you know, we have to wait till they send us the notice. Right, and they said July 1st. Okay. All right, that's it for correspondence. Move Thursday. on to reports. Ambulance, Denny. Uh, we had our ambulance board meeting last Thursday, the uh, 17th, and uh, we covered uh, a number of things, but the most important thing we covered was uh, the money that we may get from uh, you know uh, what that is, Neil, right. but uh, we don't know if we're going to get it or not. It, it's up in the air, so uh, it looks like we're going to get part of it, but uh, we don't know. So uh, we just spent time covering uh, things uh, based on it's been over a year since we met <coughs> last time, and we just covered uh, some time... Um, in there um, so okay. but the the city and the village being the supportive of this and, and doing the splits the same as we did yes, before strictly yes, on population yes. well i didn't talk with the mayor i talked with um jim wilhelm the fire chief and the fireman that was there but i did not talk with the mayor i would suppose that they will since they're carrying the burden, uh, but uh, that remains to be seen. But I suppose if they get the money, that they'll yeah. come to the plate with us on this. And that's, Chris, the, your question, once you saw there's a higher percent probability of receiving the funding, this is the one we know is covered roughly and, and I'm sure the mayors are all going to agree to go with the split, and the easiest thing to do is by population, just as the way the funds are distributed. So of this uh, $64,101 quote, essentially the township would be 30% of that, so roughly 19000 okay. You know, and this will be good for all of our residents and everybody in the district, which is nice and... Same thing, it'll outfit both units. Okay, any questions for Denny? Okay, Sheriff Deputy Lawson. Good evening, how's everyone doing today? Good. Good. Excellent. Uh, so one of the uh, one of the trends that we're actually seeing, and it, 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 again, we have seasons for different crimes. Uh, a lot of people have been going through mailboxes. Uh, what we're finding is that when individuals are putting the graduation signs up in front of their houses, uh, family members are sending cards with money, checks, gift cards to houses. And uh, we've had a few instances already where people are starting to go through mailboxes. So it's something we're aware of. We're, we are uh, increasing patrols in certain areas where we've already had issues. And then, um, obviously, we are uh, <laughs> we're trying to be around as much as possible in general. But other than that, I've been driving through uh, Hidden Valley, checking for 
the speeding issues, which I did check on the uh, speed box, and it does log. Oh, good. It does log speed. That's a, a question we had the last time. They did upgrade it. Good. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll get that up, and then uh, yeah, business as usual. Just enjoying the summer. Okay, good. Well, thanks, and David, just Denny, just so you guys recall, that's. We wanted the speed trailer once before the old version, but it was out of commission, and that's why we were hoping with the newer technology, you know, it logs the number of vehicles coming through, what their speeds are, so you can actually get some data out of there. You know, are people really speeding, and is it as bad as people are saying, okay. or is it also having the impact of slowing people down, which you'll see since you can collect that speed as they're coming in mm -hmm. and see if they are you know, decelerating as they see um, the signage up there. What did you put the speed? Well, it was a speed trailer. What's the trailer. term they're yeah. using for it now, Matt? Uh, they're probably uh, not calling it speed trailer anymore. Maybe they are. Maybe speed device. I'm, I'm not completely sure. Okay. Uh, this one, this one uh, with, with the new system, it's a little modified, so we actually have to find a post to mount it on. And that's what, yeah, and that's pretty much what some of the smaller communities are used, and they're all post-mounted. So it's yeah. not on a trailer anymore, Chris. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Speed it's, uh, device. How about we'll go with speed device? Okay, Perfect. sounds good. Okay. Uh, is it a control device? It's Sorry? a speed indicator device. Does it have an official name? It does now. Speed <laughs> indicator I'm, device. I'm sure it does. <laughs> if you ask me what it was, oh, I couldn't answer that right now. Go back to home as a speed indicator device until we know otherwise. Fair enough. All right, are there any other questions then for Matt? No, I have none, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Right, Thank thanks, you, guys. Matt. Thanks for taking care of the all-purpose vehicle issue, too, you know, down in the valley. And you've been part of all the conversation or email conversations with the yeah. prosecutor also. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still working with that, but... Yeah, and you realize there's two sides now, and both camps are positioning themselves. Oh, I, I always tell people there are three sides to a story. One side, the other side, and then the truth usually falls yeah. somewhere in the middle. So. Yeah. Uh, a little bit closer every day. I like to yep. stay Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for your time, guys. Take care. Good night. All right, uh, zoning, Inspector Re uh, Remy Cerrone. Okay, uh, we had uh, five permits uh, for the month, uh, three fences, two accessory buildings. That's pretty much it for uh, permits. Uh, the ZBA has scheduled a meeting for July the 15th at 7 o'clock for an area variance. July the 15th? Yep. July the 15th at 7 o'clock. That will be an area variance. I will not be there because I have another township meeting that same night on Thursday. That's a seven. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. July fifteenth. Correct. Anything else, Remy? And that's it. Okay. What business is that for? What is that for? Area. It's an area variance for uh, for a tree service on 113. Whereabouts? Right next to Jamie's Flea Market. Okay. West of the old railroad. On the north side. You're talking between Jamie's and the old railroad? Or are we talking? Yeah. You've got an email from Bill Atrani. Yeah, I did, I did see the email, but I didn't see that. Yeah. He has That's in there it. if you open okay. up the attachment. Okay. And that'll give you all the specifics. All right. <coughs> I can ask Remy right now. Okay, any other questions for Remy? We're still at the three houses. Yeah. All right, Fire Prevention Officer Chris Nyhart. You'd like to bring up about the, we were inspecting the Jamie's Flea Market. They have a lot of food trucks that are not, they have up to five food trucks that work at the flea market. The state has regulations on mobile food vendors or food trucks. 
after walking through and looking at the food trucks that were there, neither one actually met the requirement of the state or what the state requires that they have for safety equipment. So I've talked to the gal that owns the flea market to, and I gave her the paperwork that corresponds with the food trucks, what's required of the vendors, the checklist, and trying to work with her to get the food trucks inspected before they go on the property and open up for business to serve the public. So in the city of Amherst, we do the same thing. The city charges about $236 a year for an inspection, for a one-time inspection. So in the township, I don't know what you guys want to do with fees, but maybe something along the lines of whatever the labor cost is in a vehicle per hour per food truck inspection, or if we can get three or four trucks done at the same time, where it's going to take less than an hour, work out some kind of a price with them, a minimum price and a maximum price, instead of going out. Because these people that come in, they come in, they open up their food trucks, they pay no property tax or income tax to the township. So if we charge a fee to go out and do the food truck inspection, we know they meet all requirements and it's safe for them to be on that property to serve their food. You know, you're inspecting accordance to the fire aspect. Yes, yes. Do they need inspection from the health department? They do. They get health department inspections. And then the state regulations, when you cite, alluded to the state regulations, now are those state under fire, the fire code? Yep, state fire code, yes. Okay. I'm surprised under other sections there's probably regulations also. Uh, all I can do is the fire ones. And typically the health department won't come out unless the fire inspection is done first. So a lot of the vendors that come to other cities, they'll get inspected in every city. A lot of the cities require that they go out and do the inspection on each individual food truck, and there's a fee associated with that. So like I say, in the city of Amherst, we charge 236 a year for, per inspection. So to go out, to the flea market, you know, like I said, I stopped in and the two that I looked at weren't uh, nowhere near where they should be, so, you know, and I, like I said, I talked to the gal that owns the flea market, gave her a copy of what the regulations are, she's aware of what they need to be, and she seems pretty receptive of having those trucks inspected before they're allowed on the property to serve food. That was the lady from the flea market, that owns the flea, flea market. market. Yes. What's her name? Morell, I think, is her last name. Lorna. If you want me to talk, I can look it up. Mark. But, like I said, I don't know what, how you guys feel about going out. Going out and doing it for nothing, I think, is not in the best interest of the township. To go out and charge a minimum fee to cover the labor cost in the vehicle, is probably something that would be more beneficial. Well, I would suggest, and it's just my personal suggestion, that you figure out what you're going to spend there in time and you allocate that you get paid for uh, by the owners of the trailers so that you're paid for your time and effort, okay? Now, how you work that uh, would be up to you, but um, do you understand what I'm saying? I do. Okay. I do. I'm going to suggest, Chris, this would be a hybrid of what Denny's just said. Um, I realize we're all getting this the first time tonight, so right. there's no prepared resolution here. Um, I would suggest that the fee be uh, charged for the time and vehicles as indicated in the current uh, fire agreement between Amherst, uh, for Amherst, City of Amherst and Amherst Township for the provision of fire with a minimum fee of $50 per truck. Wait, Chris, I'm assuming you're typing that. Tell me when you're ready. That the fees be charged. Okay, that 
for the inspection of food trucks. That the fee will be equivalent to the hourly, it'll be time and vehicle specific. A fire inspection, I think. Based, too. On, based on the uh, time expended by the township's fire prevention officer and inspecting the vehicles for the existing fire code. Minimum fee will be $50 per vehicle per year Maximum fee, $236 per vehicle per year. And if you can read that back so we all know that you type what we think we said. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Lynch suggested that the fees be for the inspection of food trucks. That truck, this must be that. The fee will be equivalent to the time and vehicle specific based on the time expended by the two fire prevention officer and inspecting the vehicles well for the existing fire code. Minimum fee will be $50 per vehicle per year and the max will be $236 per vehicle per year. Okay, I don't think we need that suggested in the, it's a motion, right? So I don't we don't know. Need Are we making a motion? I'm making a motion and we can discuss and it can certainly be changed by the okay. trustees we go then forward. Because we're moved. making a motion on a suggestion. Moved that the fee or fire inspection. Listen to David because he can see what you're typing. No, I can't. Can we, can we change that because the code says mobile food, food unit not food truck. So move okay. that the fee, fees for fire inspection of, oh, I'm sorry, Chris, what did you say? Mobile, mobile food unit. Mobile food, food unit? Yeah. That's what the code, that's, they give a description of what a mobile food unit is and it includes a Push carts, people selling hot dogs on the side of the road, on bicycles, taco stands, anything like that. The same thing as the all-purpose vehicle versus four-wheeler, mini bike, <laughs> <laughs> dirt bike. It covers it all. So I had moved that the fees for fire inspection, for fire inspection mobile food units be equivalent to the time and vehicle specific based on the time expended for the two fire prevention officers and inspecting the vehicles for the existing fire code. Wish Minimum I fee. So read that again, Chris. Moved at the fees for the fire inspection mobile food unit. Of um, the inspection of the inspection of <coughs> mobile food unit. be equivalent to the time and vehicle specific based on the time expended by the fire prevention officer and inspecting the vehicles for the existing fire code. I think that specific was specified. Read it ah. again. Moved that the fees for the inspection of mobile food units be equivalent to the time and vehicle specified based on the time expended by the fire prevention officers. That's specified in the current fire service agreement. Current fire? Yeah, it's what's specified in the current fire service agreement between the city of Amherst and Amherst Township. That's what got dropped. Now 
Now if you read it, it should sound okay. moved that the fees for the inspection of mobile food units be equivalent to the time and vehicle specified in the current fire service agreement. Time and vehicle cost specified. In the current fire service agreement between the City of Amherst and Amherst Township based on the time expended by the fire prevention officer Inspecting the vehicles for existing fire code. Minimum fee will be $50 per vehicle per year and the max will be $236 per vehicle per year. And instead of vehicle, it'll be that mobile oh, food unit. MFU. That was Lynch. Yeah, we don't have a second yet, I don't think. I'll second it. Six, seven, that'll be six, eight. Second. Abraham? Yes. You got the first and the second. So Chris, yep. you understand what's going on, yep. right? Oh. And this Chris, and yes. then we'll have in our fee schedule. Sorry, I'm um, hot. <laughs> We'll get Georgian to update that both on the, you know, so it's on the website too. Um, and by doing it this way going forward, the only thing we have to ever change is the minimum and the maximum. Right. Uh, because of the contract changes, it'll be covered, you know, for that fee. And you'll discuss it with Jamie's flea market. And this really covers any place any else place in the township. Right. You know, I, I know there's been times you know, on 113 also where they've been, you know, there's been food serviced. Because uh, had I known sooner, I would have stopped for dinner. But <laughs> All right, any other comments? <coughs> no. Okay, roll call then, Chris. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Eric? Yes. 6-8. Anything else? Um, we're working through the inspections in the township. We're trying to get the some of the big farms before they uh, go into full production, but trying to get in there to do something is you know, try. We try to stop, make arrangements to you know figure out a day that we can go do them. And so far, they're busy out in the field. They don't, you know they can't take the time away from what they're doing to come you know to walk through the building for a couple hours with that. So we're working on those, but we're working our way through the township the businesses in the township so everybody is pretty receptive like I say a lot of just like with Jamie's the gal that owns it had no idea that there was any regulations for food trucks till I stopped and talked to her talked to the vendors and after I talked to her I gave her this list of what the state requires and you know she said it's going to be beneficial for her as well as the vendors so I could see where the owner of Jamie's might not know but I would think the food truck vendors would know because this isn't the only place they go just so the trustees are aware is you know
know, this becomes a controversial issue in communities, but usually it's the disagreement between brick and mortar uh, food providers versus those with the food trucks, you know, and the argument generally is, is, hey, we're paying property taxes, we're committed to your community long term, food truck vendors, you know, they're transient come and go. Obviously, you know, the person who owns the food truck is going to say, this is my livelihood and I have, you know, a right to, you know, earn a living. So those are the arguments. Today's Chronicle has a full half-page ad that was taken out from people that are now upset with a recent change that was just made down in the city of Overland on food trucks. And I know Elyria has wrestled with this back and forth in recent years on the use of food trucks. So it's... You know, I don't know if it's, a, again, one of these things that's just happened to cycle through right now, but I appreciate Chris bringing it forward. And uh, Chris, the documents that you have there, can we get a copy of that? Um, sure. If you, get, if you can leave it, Linda, you could scan that. It could be emailed out to us. It would. It doesn't have to be now, but... Got it? Thanks. All right, we're all set to move on. All right, thanks, Chris. Oh, and one, one more thing before you go. The trustees you might have received, the Lorraine County Township Association has forwarded on. Lorraine County Emergency Management has a survey they went conducted, uh, predominantly as far as uh, known potential hazards in every community so that the planning can be put in place in addressing anything that comes up, um, ultimately being if there needs to be any type of federal help in the recovery of that. Uh, Chris is very much aware of it. I told him I may have some questions because, you know, are they talking about you have a turnpike going through, you have a main interstate going through, you have a railroad track going through, you have certain businesses with operations, that could be a hazard. It's not something that's real regular, but it does happen. I mean, it's less than a year ago now, we had the train derailment right here. You know, fortunately for Amherst, it missed the utility pole that would have cut off power uh, to the city. And I believe the reports that the rail line put on, there were uh, no hazardous chemicals released. Grain cars. Yeah, so, but we know hazardous items are carried along that railroad, you know, every single day. You know, I don't know if they want to get, if they're talking, you know, we've got main truck traffic routes here, and, you know, they have a placard on there that gives you uh, some coding as far as whether there's something hazardous in, but you're relying on the person appropriately having the right placard and then people understanding what that is. It still doesn't necessarily tell you exactly what's in there. Um, so, you know, it's uh, even the safety forces that have to run to the scene to take care of it are going to be concerned, you know, and just knowing how to address that. Um, but uh, the, the Lorraine County Township Association did forward that, that to everybody, so please take a look at that survey. Um, if you have any questions, talk with Chris. Uh, but this is going through all the communities. But it's something we do need to address and get back to Lorraine County Emergency Management. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, Rose Parks and Cemetery, Superintendent Smarsh. Uh, there's nothing to report with the uh, cemetery and parks. But, um, and the roads, we're doing a, another uh, round of roadside mowing. Uh, we are going around cleaning the tops and inside the catch basins. And um, speaking of catch basins, I met with Matt and Don Romankek and Mark today and went over the uh, GIS map system. Mm -hmm. We're all logged in. That's all taken care of usable, it's accessible. It was a little bit of an ordeal getting um, all logged in, but there's a lot of information uh, about the storm sewers and, and anything that deals with storm water. There's, there's been a lot of work that's been put into there, and I find it uh, very beneficial. Good. Yeah. And what you're looking at now, 
just to keep in the back of your mind of the same thing, Linda. When this all started, and this is over a year ago, um, and Matt Arnold was at the meeting, I assume you've been working with Matt. Yes. Is we had also asked why can't this, you know, work with a county engineer and also include road signs. So, and that's why we wanted to get started as far as location type of sign, so we can also put that in, you know, kind of like another layer, you know, and be able to see it. So you know exactly what you've got, where it is, you know, how many, because you know how they are when they get knocked over, and, you know, typically they're usually hit, not, you know, we're not replacing them because of weather situations, usually people knock them over. I'm glad you liked it, I was wondering how difficult be for you yeah and in, in time it's even gonna get well the more I get around it you know it's, it's easy enough now that we're in uh, but as time goes on obviously with technology and then more when we find out things that either need to be corrected or added to it it'll just be that much more to it so okay. it's, it's definitely Good. a beneficial right there yeah if you get time just Know, if you have one of those rain days and you're more inside and Linda if you have time you might want to just touch base with Kevin so you can see it start thinking about you know how else this can be used to make his job easier too that was uh, that was talked about um, here in the future as I mentioned with Linda you know being a part of it being on board after we get rolling with this thing that it's good possibility which it would take a little bit of uh, you know working out but we could there what they'll have is the townships being able to add to this system of either corrections or if we replace mm -hmm. or you know fixtures that, a, that the township themselves could add to it but that's in the that's yeah. still for in the future. One of these days, and once it gets going, it might be good to bring all the trustees in. I, all I had seen a year ago, and they, I'm sure they improved it since then, was a demo of what was to come. And, you know, but they didn't actually have the system built out yet. So that might be helpful. And, I mean, you could sign in and here, and we could all see it without having to stand around one little screen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see most definitely. Okay. I, I too was taking a look at it. There's a, already a couple of changes that, you know, will be updated and need to be updated so that they are, they are correct. But okay. So that in the, there's another thing that uh, Don had mentioned that it's not on paper yet, and I won't take any steps until it is on paper. But we will be receiving the uh, five thousand dollar mini grant. Oh, great! Thank you. There was a tree that came down on Dewey Road yesterday morning. It took out the power lines and a couple of homes on uh, Dewey Road was uh, without power for the day. Uh, I was, I shut her down probably, I shut the road down between Old, or uh, yeah, between Old Middle Ridge and uh, the tracks. Uh, that was for the day. I opened back up 3.30 yesterday uh, they had that all wrapped up. We went out there today and uh, finished cleaning it up and getting uh, some of that roadside taken care of there. Kevin, I'm sorry, what was the road? Did you say Dewey? Dewey Road was Thank closed. You. And that's all I have for now. Okay, there any other questions for Kevin? I do I have none. I do have one. Uh, you had made the change to get the more frequent attention and maintenance of the uh, portable restrooms in the park. Has that been occurring, and how's that been looking? That's been going. I have no complaints. I've checked. I've checked it any time that I've gone down there, and I have not heard any complaints. I don't know if anybody else has had any complaints over I it. I haven't heard any. I haven't heard any complaints and haven't been down there as frequent as I used to be, so I've never had to use it for an emergency recently. But, you know, with the complaint you had before from the person, you thought it might have just been because the increased usage, so that's why you would ask for the increased maintenance. Yeah, and it's, 
I would say that's definitely take care of the problem for now. Okay. You know, like I had, uh, I believe I have it scheduled to the end of August, just for that twice, and uh, we keep a close eye on it there. At the end of August, I'll make sure scheduling isn't getting into uh, September if I added September onto it. Uh, so just the uh, the double, the twice a week service on it's just going to the end of August. Okay. You know, that might, you know, it might be something, Linda, to consider in the future for the health department grant, especially if the Girl Scouts, you know, and I know it changes depending upon who the leader is, you know, if we can have that check, because that probably fit right in with the health department, too, you know, and maybe cover that cost of the more frequent maintenance because of the increased usage. Okay, just a consideration, but I mean, you guys may come up with, you know, like the ideas you had this year, which are very helpful. Okay. All right, thanks, Kevin. Okay, I know, Linda, you're normally not here on the second meeting, but did you have anything you wanted to report? Um, the only thing that I'll report is um, I had sent everybody a email saying that the event sponsorship grant for $1,500 was awarded to us from NOPEC, right. and that is to cover the dumpster. I, I wrote it as covering the dumpster days, fall cleanup, which includes the grinding, so we can use it for the grinding. That's um, wonderful. <clears throat> we were able to put it under the Amherst Township Road Department because they're a subsidiary kind of within our our township and that qualified they just cannot make out checks to Amherst Township and put it in the general fund but they can give it to the road department who's heading up the grinding and all that just a loophole that we just had to jump through 1500 1500 so then Chris will have to put that in the road fund too yes and then okay. we could pay for the dumpster days yard waste grinding um, and that won't be paid until the end of the third quarter. So probably the end of September sometime. Thank you, Linda. Dumpster days grinding, and what else did you say? Fall, I just called it fall cleanup. Okay. Which was how we had to word it so that we could include the grinding. Did you want to touch on the green ribbon grant? Um, the Green Ribbon Grant Award, um, I submitted, and we will know July 16th. That's when they will be awarding them. And that's $2,500 for future energy saving projects, which we've already earmarked for changing the lights in the hall and the offices to the LED. So that's July 16th? Mm -hmm. And then, um, as we talked about earlier, the OPWC is changing um, over to WorkWise for their website. So I was in a webinar on Monday. Um, Kevin was on the roads after that storm, so he wasn't able to be in on it. Um, but it was just telling us how to fill out the paperwork online, which is really pretty much what we've already done. Yeah, I appreciate you doing that. Um, <clears throat> I think you guys all saw in the email um, Mary Keller from Lorraine County Engineer's Office uh, gave us the heads up on that and, um, on Friday, and the webinar is Monday, so I don't know if that email was ever sent out to anybody else here at the township, but it was important to know, know, know about it, and I'm glad I think the county engineer recognized, hey, a lot of communities didn't receive the notice. Right. <clears throat> the nice thing is they do have a YouTube channel, OPWC does, and they're having all these webinars up on, on the YouTube channel okay. for your viewing at any time. The one I was in on Monday, uh, Abby DeHart had a lot of issues with cutting in and out and, and losing sound. Okay. So ours was kind of splotchy. Tuesday was a repeat, and then Wednesday apparently was going to be another repeat of it. So they said whichever one was the best quality was the one that was going to go up on the YouTube channel. Oh, so it was on their end. Chris, that's probably what you were talking about. That's where I was confused. Yep. I was talking about the ARP. Okay, webinar, yeah, no, this is for I the OPWC. Said, I didn't have a problem with mine at home. 
that the Office right. of Budget Management put on. But yeah, you're, she was having just issues. She could hear, but she couldn't talk to us, and her computer, she couldn't share her screen, and it, okay. it was a little difficult. But it is up there if anybody wants to watch it on the OPWC uh, website, or I'm sorry, YouTube channel. Also, when, when the WorkWise gets up and running, which it, it's starting to kind of come into fruition bits at a time, they're going to have a handbook that they're going to put up there, too, for our use that will walk us through all of the, the new website changes. The only question that we do have that Chris came up with was about the invoicing. There is a tab across the top that does say invoice, whether or not we have to pay our loans and, and um, payments back to them through that portal, we don't know. We already are, yeah, if that was at the end of last year. But is that gonna be through the work-wise? That I, yeah, that yeah we I don't know we that. have to figure right. out because I'm already signed up for that. Yeah, to pay. so, but they are available. As Abby said, you know, they're available anytime for any questions, so we can just call her or email. And, Abby's and they, they understand. Real responsive. Yeah, and they understand that this is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Thank you for being here tonight, Linda. Yeah, is there any other question for Linda? She does. I mean, her and Kevin have had a lot of stuff to do. We have had a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, well, and it's been good because some of it's been helping bring in funding and some are potential to bring in funding right. too, which, you know, helps everybody in the long term, you know, since, you know, it doesn't necessitate additional levies. All right, well, then we'll move on. Um, the rest of the item, oops, wait a minute, I still have to get, I don't have any uh, report for LORCO today. Um, the MS4 phase two, I think between the reports that uh, both Linda and Kevin have given have already covered quite a bit of that for the stormwater. Uh, we will be having an item on sewers here later under new business. And Kevin's already covered the, he got a heads up on the mini grant. So we'll move on to complaints. Uh, Remy, this is the one with the, uh, the yard maintenance and the lawn on Deepwood. Right, uh, that's the, we're still working on that one there. We're, tomorrow we're supposed to uh, put an ad in the paper, uh, uh, a posting showing that we are trying to get a hold of the owner, which we haven't been able to do. So as long as we do that posting in the paper within after seven days, then we could go ahead and have our guy mow the lawn there and then we can assess them for the taxes. And do you notify the auditor to get that assessment on? I mean, what's... Uh, no, I don't. I it actually is supposed to. Howard used to do it for him. Yeah. So who's he contact specifically? I have notes in there. Okay. Yeah, if you can, once Linda gets you a contact at the auditor's office, if you can make the direct contact with them, and then probably best, once you've got it done, make sure Chris gets that information because we've got to recover those costs. Absolutely. You know, this, this is something with, that's, new to me, typically we've just posted things, right. um, expecting they're still occupied, but the prosecutor's office has now told Remy he's got to put this in the newspaper, which, you know, that's probably going to cost us as much as the cost of cutting the grass. Mm -hmm. And then you don't get it back till, if till the itself. taxes are paid, and then it's like six months or right. longer after that. Have we received money back ever under this program? One time since I've been here. We've only, I've only one time filed, so in four years. And the thing is, it's timeliness too, David. You gotta keep those charges going in right away, especially if there's multiple cuttings because we've had in the past also, we expend the funds in the meantime, the property transfers before, you know, the lien got put on the property. Right. And with that case, you just eat it. You know, I checked the auditor's website, and the taxes are back back due on that place for uh, quite a bit. So, but uh, 
I know who the gentleman's name is, but I, I can't find find where he's at. Can't right. get a have hold of him. Talked with the neighbors? Do they have an idea? Have you talked with it? Anybody have an idea where he's at? I can't hear you. Does anyone have an idea where he's at? No. The neighbors are the ones that called the complaint. Okay. And he's not been there. Well, you'll get it. Chris will get you contact information, and I'm sure, sure they'll explain everything you need to do to send to them. But it's probably going to be scanning invoices that we receive back from the Chronicle or whoever cuts the grass and sending it in to them to get put on. And they might even have a nice form for you to use. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions for Remy? No, I have none. Right, thanks, Remy. You're welcome. All right, under unfinished business for uh, those items that are listed for specific responsibility, the trustees have anything to bring forward? No, I do not. David? Just under solid waste, I did file the solid waste grant. Good. I asked for reimbursement for grinding in the fall and uh, for the fall newsletter. We put another article in on the county recycling and uh, that should help uh, meet the uh, advertising. There's still a 10% requirement for advertising. So that should, should meet that requirement of the grant. But pretty much the same as last year. Okay. And I know you got all that information at George Ann too, right? I get, I'm going to get it to her. I'll forward it to the grant. Okay. When I get it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I got it filed. I didn't make any copies of it yet, so. Neil, I'll get you that. under unfinished business, do you want to take off the Lorraine sanitary sewer rate increase for Hidden Valley since that's settled? Oh, yeah, let's see. let's see. Where are we at here, Linda? This is under your unfinished business under sanitary sewers? Yes. Okay. Yes. We can take that off. That's yeah. That's been settled in the court, and we're now under the county, which you have down here. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What are you taking off? I'm just going to delete this because this action's already been taken care of under unfinished business. So it'll be what? off on the next. Proposed agenda. clean water are the 12. Yeah, the, thank you. Okay, well then under new business, there is a prepared resolution in your packet. Uh, this is support for the facility planning area prescription change from on-site systems only to limited sewers expected within 20 years as a result of the Carvana project. And you'll see up on the... I don't have a packet. Oh, you don't have a packet? No. Um, but, but Chris has a packet that has a, her resolution was clean because the trustees' resolution's got a couple of markups on grammar errors. Oh. So I, I don't have one. But we'll find it. But she's got, she's got one here, which has got everything else in it, Chris. Um, we'll check later. The only difference is your packet is going to have a couple of markups on it. There is not one. Yeah, well, we'll find it. Just use this extra one. We'll find it. Because as I said, the only difference is the one that you were just given is going to have a couple of grammar error corrections whereas I had printed a clean resolution for your records. Okay. And I've also sent that electronically with the update with a clean one. Um, but anyway, uh, what you can see up on the screen here, and it's tough to see the highlight, but you can see the darkened, lighter yellow area there. Uh, and you see the cursor's pointing to it now. That is south of State Route 2 and north of Middle Ridge. Uh, what's happened with the Carvana project coming in, uh, 
the county and utilizing the TIF dollars is going to extend, and we had this discussion in a previous meeting in a map, these sewers are going to be extended under Route 2 uh, following uh, the Old West Ridge. And there will be a pump station right where the cursor is now to uh, just right there, just south of Route 2 that will then send the wastewater into Force Main. Everything going to that pump station will be gravity fed, which will cover um, that area that's highlighted in addition to all of the area south, which is our jet area. There's roughly, it's not the full areas in the jet, but there's approximately 69 acres in the jet mm -hmm. area. What the county's done is by extending those sewers and using the Carvana project as a catalyst is that that improves the value of that property now south of Route 2 so that for the commercial end that now has, will make it much more desirable for a business to locate there and bring the appropriate jobs. But for the Northeast Ohio Airwide Coordinating Agency, they've got all these definitions as far as where they project development uh, that necessitates the need for sanitary sewers will occur. Well, the current plan in the WACA shows that area highlighted in yellow, uh, what they call a prescription as don't expect sewers there and uh, anytime soon, certainly not within the next 20 years uh, because they just don't see where there's any potential of a, a sanitary extension. Well, the reality is that had been a mistake because all the area surrounding that, it already shows that there was a potential of sewers within 20 years. Uh, now the sewer uh, that goes along Middle Ridge will be on the south side of Middle Ridge. Uh, so that area that's highlighted in yellow that is currently predominantly residential other than the Marathon Station, is um, they will have the option of tying in since the sewer is on the south side of the road, there will, the health department will not require them to tie in. I did send to the major property owners this document so they knew um, the trustees would be taking action on this, but the only action we're taking is at the request of the county sanitary engineer is to get the prescription for the area corrected knowing that there will be sanitary sewers there in less than 20 years. Um, one of the property owners had the question, well, are they going to be extended further along Middle Ridge, um, going all the way to Oberlin Road North, and which is a reasonable question. You know, their interest is because they have other property there which would make their property more valuable. The answer is at this time there's no plan for extending that sewer even though the current prescription already is that sewers could be put there within 20 years. And the logic behind that is that the sewers created for Carvana were for that economic development and the jobs they brought, and the sewers that would be extended now south of Route 2 were the same reason, whereas if you extended those sewers along Middle Ridge, Anybody on the south side of Middle Ridge, if the sewer continued along there on the south side, the health department would require those within 200 feet to tie in. So this way, nobody's going to be forced in. Uh, the property owners would, along that yellow area, um, and even those that aren't yellow, the smaller lots, they would only tie in if they chose to tie in. And obviously that's their decision, and that could be because they want to increase property values or they have a failed on lot system, and maybe they decide, hey, my lower cost option is to get into the sanitary line versus upgrading my on lot system. So that's what the county sanitary engineer has asked us to do. He's also provided a letter, which is in your packet, that he'd like us to sign. Uh, to send to Grace Gallucci, the Executive Director of the Northeast Ohio Area-Wide Coordinating Agency. Um, I'm, I'm a little baffled by this. This, this well, whole project is in the 
city of Lorraine's facility planning yeah, well, planning areas. Yeah, so let's if they put the, a sewer down there. Let's get the they motion. Have to service. Let's get. I'm going to make the motion so then okay. we can have discussion. Um, I'm going to make the motion that the Amherst Township Board of Trustees supports the facility planning area prescription change from on-site system only to limited sewers expected within 20 years as a result of the Carvana project. And I'm not going to read through all the details here, but it's specifically in Section 1. The Amherst Township Board of Trustees supports Lorraine County Sanitary Engineers request to revise the prescription from on-site systems only limited to, uh, to uh, limited sewers expected within 20 years. All affected parties uh, be allowed to connect to any extended sanitary sewer and the attached letter shall be signed and forwarded to NAWACA. Section 2 is boilerplate, but I'm not going to read through all the whereas. They give the specific parcels that are impacted. It's just under 38 acres in addition to all of the owners of those particular properties. So that'll be my motion. I'll second it. Okay, and now, David, uh, discussion? Okay, my question is, uh, okay, they're going to put a sewer engineering a sewer to go under Route 2. And it's going to be a specific size to serve a specific area. And I, I don't see that as changing whether one side of the road says prescription uh, prescription for sewers, one says, one says on site. I, if a sewer is available, people will be able to tap in, I'm sure. I, they're not going to say, well, this says on site on this plan way over here in New Acca, uh Hey, there's a sewer there. You can tap. You can tap in. And uh, I, I don't know why. Who's going to authorize them to tap in? Health department. Yeah. Well, you're mistaken or misunderstand the process. Um, the health department cannot authorize them to tie in because we are part of NAWACA. Until you get that prescription change, and I've sat in many NAWACA meetings, David, they will not allow you to tie into that sewer. That sewer will be a county-owned sewer. And though, sure, somebody might by mistake get in or just go ahead and if somebody doesn't catch them and they have a contractor digging real quick and bores under the road, throws in a lateral, maybe, but I doubt it. And as soon as somebody wants to tap in, you've got to deal with getting the tap installed. You've got permits that have to be pulled. And if they looked at it and they saw that prescription was not there by NAWACA, they won't do it because NAWACA is going to say no. So all this is is setting up the process so that if those people want to tap in, they can. I mean, that's the way it is now with NAWACA setting things up in their plan. I mean, it's just like the whole thing with facility planning areas. You know, we had talked about when Hidden Valley got hit with paying 200% of the city of Lorraine rate. And you recall we had a city council person said, you know, that it's costing them money to service these properties. That's how they justify it. We said, okay, release the area. We've got somebody else that's willing to service it. Oh, no, that isn't going to happen, and there's no way we could without going through NAWACA. So that's just the way the process is. You either are part of the Metropolitan Planning Organization or you're not. And right now, we, you know, there's all Lorraine County, Medina County, Jaga County, and Lake County are all part of NAWACA. So we have to go through this to do this. You know, and that gives the, those landowners for that 38 acres the opportunity to do it. For the additional property owners going to the um, east, some of them um, will have access and potential to tap in, but as you get further east, right where the pointer's showing right now, move that a little bit, George Ann, so people see it. You see where the pointer's showing? That's going to be the end of the sewer line coming along Middle Ridge. So anybody further to the east, they won't even have a sewer line to tap into. It doesn't mean the county can't extend it in the future, but I would suspect it's not going to be extended unless there's some other catalyst 
to necessitate that expansion that would minimize the burden along the people that existingly live there. You know, for instance, you see that large plot of land up there to the, just to the north of Middle Ridge that's not yellowed. You know, <coughs> what if somebody decides to put a housing development in there? <coughs> well, how are you going to put in a housing development without access to sewers? But the sewer doesn't go that far. You know how we work this out, David. The developer will want to extend the sewers. We're probably going to try and put where the development pays for the development. I'm sure the county will. Okay, you want sewers. You're helping with some of the cost here for extending the sewer to lessen the burden on the individual property owners that are currently there. Okay? And that's how the sewer lines will incrementally grow versus if you just extend it down there now, the health department will force those property owners, if they're within 200 feet, to connect. So I think this is one where the county's done a pretty good job, and it's just, again, the, the characteristics of this area allow them to do that. And we've all been involved where it's people have been forced in, and it's never a happy situation. Okay? So that's all we're doing is supporting the county's request to have NAWACA change this prescription from only on lot systems to sanitary sewer potential within 20 years. Now, did the county say anything about a larger area that's designated as on site systems, or is it just this corner that by some quirk was left out? When I talk with Bob Kleiber, it was just this particular area. I would suggest if you have any question, you speak with him directly. I assume you had a chance to review this resolution beforehand. So you should, probably should have called him before this meeting. You know, I told him there was no need to be here, which he couldn't be anyway. I said, don't worry, Bob. I didn't expect this to have any controversy whatsoever. Any other questions? No. no. Roll call. All right, Chris. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Here. No. Right now. That's six, eight. That is six, nine. Six, nine? Are you sure? Yep. yep. Six, eight was the mobile food. Unit. Mobile food units. Yeah. And then if you could get me a clean copy, that would be great. Okay, is there any other new business? Any other business come before the board? Remy? I, I won't be here on the 28th, the 29th, and the 30th. I'm going to be out of town. Of uh, June? This, yeah, this month. 28th, 29th, and 30th. Okay, our next regular meeting will be Tuesday, July 13th. The 2022 budget meeting will be 7.30 a.m. on Friday, July 2nd, with a possible follow-up meeting at 5 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, July 6th, if required. Um, any need for a work site session at this time? I see no. Okay, there's no audience left for any concerns. Is there any need for an executive session? No, sir. Okay, then can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I'll second it. Uh, Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Yeah.